It certainly has been long overdue, but it's time to have a look at these two JVC broadcast quality monitors, which I got from the BBC Archives online auction. So these both suffer similar issues. They both have some form of vertical or frame amplitude issue where we can't get good linearity and we can't get a full scan picture. So I've just taken the backs of both of them. They're very simple things. I mean, they're not RGB. I think they can be modified, but they're very simple things. Let's take a look at this one. We've got our video processing board over here. And our audio processing and the rest of it. Down there is our power supply and our deflection circuits. Deep down there in the middle, if this phone will focus, you can see that there are two potentiometers. And those two potentiometers there do our vertical height and vertical linearity. Now there's a couple caps there. What's the chances of those caps being faulty? I've done a bit of testing off camera. I've heated up those caps, which is a, a method of testing to see if they become more capacitive. Then the picture does increase and it does get a bit better, but not so, so much so. I think it would take absolutely no time at all to change what those few caps that are there between the heat sink. The heat sink is, uh, is actually, uh, I think it's a vertical IC or a vertical zero transistor or a vertical IC. I can't tell until I take the thing out. I'm only going to be guessing. People don't like me guessing things. Uh, I'll have to take this board out. Let's not mess around, you know, let's just change those caps and, you know, be done with it. Right, so I've dismantled it. I had to take the tube off to actually get this board to slide out. Of a, an annoying setup. But look at this, that's quite strange. Interesting how they've mounted some of this stuff. I'm thinking, you know, change out these caps. I'll check them. I'll check them and uh, and we'll see. I'm, I'm sure there's only going to be one poor cap in there. Um, we'll see what I can do. Right, well, um, here we are then. I've changed some caps. Just a couple. The ones what measured totally out of whack. Oops. You can see the ones I've changed. There's a 470 there, a couple 22s, a 47. I think a 2.2 as well and a 1 mic. I'm going to give this a test. We can see if it works. Fantastic. Right, so we got the thing loosely assembled. Shall we see if it works? Powered on. I'm going to call that a great success. Let's see if we have our grayscale and colour. There we are. Right, I can't adjust the controls because I've not got the thing together. But, I mean, you know, that's perfect. Focus is off because the tube is soft and I think I've bumped the converging rings so it's gone slightly out at the top. But nothing that an adjustment can't solve, you know? Ugh, do I have to do the other one? I ended up only changing a couple caps. These ones are the ones what measured sort of not on the money. I mean, what's that? Four? One of them I didn't really need to change anyway. What's this one? A 100? No, that's a 470. That was in between the uh, vertical centre switch. And a couple of these were even connected to in series or in parallel to the vertical height and linearity controls. Some of them were a bit leaky, but, you know, not, not very. It wasn't that far out. I suppose I've got to do the other one now. In the second part, I'll get the other one done. And I'll tell you what, we can go through cleaning the, the cases as well. Now, I am going to do a trick. I need to measure what the heater supply for the tube is. They're weak. They're both weak. But this one is even more so weak. This is a reasonable brightness, and I cannot get that focus to lock in. 
Unfortunately, what's happened is when these CRTs are on for a long period of time, they go soft, they go low emissions. Each cathode loses conducting material, right? And you can normally tell how used the tube is by how dark or burnt the tungsten evaporation is on the glass envelope of the neck. Unfortunately, this one's gone quite toasty, so I don't know if me adding more heater volts will do anything. But we've got the line transformer right there, and we've got a core which is available to us to wrap a couple of turns, I suppose, around. And with that, we can obviously create ourselves a winding. We can create ourselves a 6.3 volt heater. We could create a 7 volt winding or an 8 volt winding. Just a few turns of wire, you know? Obviously, I'm not too sure how the heater supply is obtained on this monitor. It could be through the built-in power supply, completely irrelevant to line output stage. Relating those two things together could potentially add stress on the line stage, could add stress on that transformer. So it's going to need some investigating into things like the circuit, because if I'm going to be driving that line output transistor hard because of the extra load added to it, and it's just not worth it and I'll I'll put up with the duff tube or I might even be able to bolt a small heater transformer on the inside. We've got loads of metal work to do that type of thing too. Right, well I suppose that's one done. So yes, as I said in the second part or part 1.5 or 2 or whatever, we're going to do the second monitor, more or less the same thing. We're going to clean the cases up because they're both quite filthy. We can clean the PCBs too. And then we'll we'll try this uh, heater thing that I want to to do. But you know they they have there's there's good colour there. It's just the focus is really crap to be honest. So maybe they were on their last legs. I don't know. With that said, I mean that I'm all done, mate. To be honest, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.